Hello and welcome back to Hydra Set Info. In this video, I'll be guiding you through the process of setting up your Nothing Phone free. Let's begin. As you can see, the phone is freshly after performing a hard reset, and this is how a welcome page looks like. As you can see at the bottom, we have some accessibility settings, which is pretty nice to see. We also have the ability to call someone, though it would pretty like you have to use it for a simple emergency information just in case of, well, emergency. And lastly, we have the ability to simply change the language. But of course, we'll stay with the English. Now let's press a little arrow, and now uh, the phone prompts us to connect to mobile network. As you can see, we do have a SIM input right now. We would have to input the SIM tray. I'm not going to do that because I do not have a SIM card on me right now, but don't you worry, it's an incredibly easy process. And if you are still struggling with that, we do have other tutorials on how to input your SIM card. But for now, I will skip it. But of course, you also can use eSIM if you want. Now, this part is extremely important. If you are moving from an older phone, maybe older Nothing Phone 2 or something else, I would strongly advise you to do these things now. They are possible later on, like you can set up your device using other devices later on, but it won't be a built-in option. You would have to install third-party applications in order to perform that process. So, once again, I would strongly advise you to just do this now, otherwise you would have to install some random bunch of crap later. Anyway, I do not have other device that I want to connect to, so I will go with a skip. Now we have the ability to connect to Wi-Fi. You obviously want to do that uh, with your network. So I will go with this one because this is my network. But as you could see, we have the ability to also just ignore this step completely. But if you want to know how to actually set up your phone without Wi-Fi network, I can, I can record a video on that so we can search it up on our channel. So now let's input the password. And after you have done that, you simply hit connect. And if the password is connect, then you are connected. Congratulations. Now this is probably the part where Google takes place, which is just, at least I just think so, because I do recognize that very specific Google font that we see right now. And in any moment now, after the info has been checked, we should be able to... Well, actually it takes quite a long time. Yep, we should be able to simply log into our Google account. Now, just like with Wi-Fi, this is technically skippable, though it will require us to just skip entire parts of setup, so I'm not going to do that. However, if you are interested in how to pre perform a setup without a Google account, I will also record a video on that specific topic. Anyway, now we want to input our email account, or in other words, simple Google account. And as a little fun fact, you do not have to manually type in gmail.com as by simply, by simply inputting the first part of your Gmail, the second part will be inputted automatically by Google. So that's a very nice life hack, I guess. And now we have to input our password, though this time you need to input the whole password. And after that's done, you simply hit next. And once again, if the password is correct, you will be Going into the next step, now we have a nice question. Who will be using this device? This is basically the question, do you want to, to configure the parental controls or not? By default, you probably don't want to. However, if you want, you can always watch other tutorials on that specific topic on our channel. So, I will now simply hit next. And now we have to agree to terms of service, Google Play terms of service and privacy policy. Otherwise, we just can't like not agree and also use the Google account. We have to agree in order to use them, otherwise we simply won't add the account to our device. Now we are getting our account info and we can set up the pin to our device. Now a cool thing is that you don't really have to set up a pin, you can click screen lock options to choose between pattern, password or set pin. So the pin is just number numbers, it's pretty self-explanatory. Password is numbers with letters. 
and pattern is just a pattern and I will go with the pattern because I just found it I just find it like convenient and pretty fast now I will redraw the simple L shape I just did although of course I would strongly advise you to do something more specific as a password so it cannot be guessed so easily now we can uh, quickly customize the notifications on our lock screen. Do we want to show all notifications, only sensitive contents, only when unlocked, or no notifications on the lock screen at all? So you probably want to choose between this or this, but if you just don't care, you can all just go with show all notification contents. It's completely up to you. I will simply hit done. And now we can also set up fingerprint unlock now this is this takes time because you have to scan your fingerprint it will take maybe one minute maybe two i'm not going to do that i'm going to skip just because we have other tutorials on our channel on how to do that so don't you worry about it now we have the ability to copy apps and data so i will go with don't copy but once again if you didn't set up using your device before this is your last possible time for it to do it Otherwise, you will have to use, as I said before, third-party applications. So, I will go to copy, and now we want to agree to few Google services. At the very bottom, we have Send Usage and Diagnostic Data. Usually, I like to disable this function because I'm not a big fan of selling my data to Google, or I'm, in other words, I'm just not a fan of Google taking my data well, technically not without my permission, because by doing this, you are giving them permissions to do it, even though it's just diagnostic data. Though still, I like to just keep that off. And for the allow scanning and use location, it's technically up to you. Both of these features, by having them turned on, will waste a little bit more of your battery than usual. But in case of nothing's phone, it doesn't really matter, because it has a very nice battery. Besides, the allow scanning, while it technically could be disabled and you really shouldn't notice it, the use location is very important because you are you never know when something unfortunate will happen. However it may not sound, you never know when your phone will freeze to death or when whenever your phone will get stolen and having the Find My Device feature of online is incredibly useful. So I would strongly advise you to just at least keep the use location. But of course, if you want to, you can disable it completely. And the same thing actually applies here to the backup. The backup is incredibly important, and once again, if something unfortunate happens, if your phone will die or will be lost or will stolen, whatever, not only you will lose your device, but also everything that comes with it, including data, images, videos, applications, everything. So having a password enabled is, having a backup, sorry, enabled, is incredibly useful, and I would strongly advise you to just keep that on just like this. Now we have the ability to choose our browser and search engine. You can choose whatever you want, like it's completely up to you. I will go with the Firefox as my browser and as a search engine I will probably go with the Brave. Now we have the ability to continue setup. Since this is a full how to perform a setup tutorial, I will go with continue, but if you want to, you can always just leave the setup at this point. Now we should see let contacts nearby find and share with you. This is also a feature that will basically waste a little bit of your battery because it will try to connect to like search for nearby devices all the time. Once again, if you think you will actually use this feature, enable it. If you think that's useless and you will never use it, go with no thanks. And we have Gemini. Now we can't really not agree to having Gemini on our phone, it's in, unfortunate. But we can, ag but we can't agree. Uh, uh, no, in other words, we can agree uh, to go with no thanks, so it won't activate itself automatically whenever we go with Hey Google. And now, as a quick rundown, a dollar email account, you do it, you simply hit Google or something else, you go, you log in, you're done. Change how text is displayed, you can increase the font size or decrease it, you can also increase the icon size, you can enable bold text so it can be visible um, better, and also high contract text. So, that's done. We also have the ability to change wallpaper, we have few built-in wallpapers, or you can choose something from your gallery, but only after your setup is done so you can actually take some photos. It's pretty self-explanatory. 
Review additional apps, these are pretty uh, pretty good, though I actually wouldn't call them bloatware, technically they are, but as I guess you can just disable them completely. But these four Google's applications are pretty important, and I think I would normally leave them on at least the Google Wallet, since this is pretty convenient. And then we also have the ability to set up always on display, we can enable it or not now, Enabling it will give you some fancy always in display text, but it will waste your battery. So I will go with that now. Then we simply hit next. And in any moment now our phone should be ending. So we have we need to agree. We can also agree to experience improvement programs, but once again, technically speaking, this basically means that they will gather your information about how you use their products. So you can disable this, disable this. Oh my god, I don't know how to... Okay, and disable this. No, nothing, uh, nothing, notifications. Technically, you could enable them. Maybe they would give you a notification about new updates or something like that. But I'm just not personally a fan, so I will go with next. We also have a Glyph Matrix, which is a feature that is exclusive to Nothing Phones Free. I will skip this, but only because we have a full tutorial on Glyph Matrix on our channel which is very long and I don't want to go over it now, so I'll just skip it now. And the same things go with essential keys, but we can't really disable this. Oh boy, and now we have a quick run, uh, rundown on what's new in OS 3.0. So as you can see, we have the ability to personalize our lock screen. We can rearrange our quick settings pretty easily. We can share our favorite widgets with our best friends, which is pretty cool, I guess. And few more functions. So let's go with next. Now we have the ability to choose our visual style. As you can see, that's actually pretty cool because they are giving you uh, the ability to choose between default Android or the nothing. And to be honest, I will go with nothing since I just like their style. And as you can see, our phone is now fully set up. If you found this video helpful, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. And if you want to know what to do next, you make sure to watch my video on first things to do after setup on nothing phones free. Anyway, that's all from me. See you next time.